This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WMDX Daily News Roundup for Mad Radio 92.7 FM and 1580 AM in Madison. For 92.7 WMDX News, I'm Savannah Tome Olson. We've got some other election results to report that we just didn't have time to get to yesterday, mostly local referendums. Fitchburg voters said no to a $3.6 million referendum that would have allowed the city to hire more police and firefighters. In Maple Bluff, a referendum of about $850,000 passed to fill a budget gap and give staff raises. Meanwhile, a referendum in Monona narrowly passed. The city will take $3 million to maintain services and give staff raises. Leaders say without that money, employees are leaving for better paying positions. Meanwhile, all local school referendums passed. We've got quite a few of them here in Dane County. I'm just going to list them off. McFarland, Madison, we reported on that one, biggest in the state this election. Evansville, Marshall, Mount Horeb, Sun Prairie, and Wanakee. All of those school districts will be getting added funding from taxpayers. Wisconsin had near record turnout in Tuesday's election. About 72.6 percent of eligible voters cast a ballot just shy of a 2004 record. The Wisconsin Elections Commission says about 3.4 million people participated, marking the highest number of votes in the state's history. While the presidential race drew the most attention, fewer voters participated down ballot. About 30,000 fewer votes were cast in the Senate race and 193,000 fewer were cast in the state referendum. A shocker here in the beer-loving state of Wisconsin, the line Kugel's Brewery up in Chippewa Falls is closing. It's been there for 157 years. Molson Coors announced it's shutting down the brewery. They'll still make Line and Kugel's just at a facility in Milwaukee. The Line and Kugel family is not thrilled with this decision. Former President Dick Line and Kugel said he'd be toasting his family with a beer in his hand and a tear in his eye after news broke. The Liney Lodge next door to the brewery and the Pilot Brewery will stay open, so you'll still be able to buy your summer's shandy on store shelves. It just won't be made in Chippewa Falls anymore. We've got a recall alert to tell you about with a beloved local favorite. Babcock Dairy says there's a labeling issue and allergy risk with two of its flavors. So if you know you've got Babcock ice cream in the freezer, you might want to take a look. They're recalling the orange custard chocolate chip and chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Basically, some chocolate peanut butter containers were actually filled with the orange custard chocolate chip, meaning they don't have the correct allergy warnings on them. Now, there's nothing actually wrong with the ice cream itself. People without those allergies could eat it just fine, but the people with those allergies could be in danger. The ice cream was sold at Babcock, Metcalf's, Ken's Meats in Delhi, and Capital Center Market. Meanwhile, we're learning more about that snafu in Milwaukee that caused election officials to recount 34,000 ballots. According to Ann Jacobs, chair of the Wisconsin Elections Commission, the doors of the tabulator machines were not locked and sealed on election morning like they should have been. Misinformation about what happened has started to spread, as misinformation often does. Election Administrator Megan Wolf says everybody who was there saw it as a mistake. All of that was done by bipartisan pairs of election inspectors and in the public eye, including many, many, many uh, bipartisan election observers from both the major political parties, other political parties, independent observers. There were many people at Central Count that were part of those proceedings. Wolf says they retabulated those ballots out of caution and transparency to the public. And a big step in trying to get PFAS out of our water here in Wisconsin. More than $273 million will go toward that effort. Governor Tony Evers, Senator Tammy Baldwin, and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources announced that 86 municipalities across the state will get funding through the Safe Drinking Water Loan Program. They'll be able to use this money to fund infrastructure projects like replacing lead service lines and addressing contaminants like PFAS. There are currently more than 167,000 known lead service lines throughout Wisconsin. Back in October, President Joe Biden was here in the Badger State where he announced the EPA mandate that all lead service lines must be replaced by 2037. And after more than 20 years, construction on University Avenue is finally finished. Back in 2001, they started installing 8,000 feet of sewer pipe to fix flooding issues. Plus, of course, we got a new overpass and now the bus rapid transit stations. So now people who drive on university for their commute or to head downtown or to reach some of the businesses there can finally have some smooth sailing. I'm Savannah Tomei Olson. Thanks for listening. This is 92.7 WMDX News. 
It's the Bucks and the Jazz. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Bucks and the Utah Jazz face off tonight in Milwaukee. Both teams struggling with one and six records. Is there pressure to finally snap the six game losing streak? Doc Rivers. No, we're, we're, this is a positive group. Like, we believe we're a really good basketball team that has played poorly. You know, last two games, you can say we played well and lost the games. The Boys and Girls State High School Volleyball Tournament is underway in Green Bay. The boys' final for the state title is tomorrow night at 7.30, Saturday night for the girls. NFL linebacker Preston Smith on why the Packers traded him to the Steelers. Um, to be honest, a few weeks ago, I requested a trade. I didn't feel like I was being useful in the system, and I, it wasn't catering to my play style. And moving forward, like, I, wouldn't, I wasn't surprised when I got the call. It's like, you know, I got what I asked for, and I'm at a great place with some great teammates and you know i'm excited for a new start and i'm excited for the rest of this journey for this season that's steelers linebacker preston smith with sports on mike clemens on your entertainment beat i'm pete schwaba if you're looking for some post-election escapism check out apple tv's slow horses the show follows a bunch of ragtag disgraced mi5 operatives led by gary oldman oldman is a disgusting disheveled gaseous curmudgeon but a very nuanced character I'm late to the party myself, having just gotten halfway through season one, but it is very entertaining, and I love when I find a show where I have multiple seasons ahead of me for some serious TV binge-watching. Over the last few years, people have been talking about films as content. That's a filthy word. It's not content, it's bleeping work. Those are the words of Paul Meskel, the star of Gladiator 2. Meskel says he does not like when the artistry of good cinema and movie making, which takes time and effort and lots of patience, is compared to an Instagram post. I don't totally disagree, but you can judge for yourself as Gladiator 2 opens November 15th. Unlike with social media content, you will need an attention span. According to Yahoo News, Michael Jackson got into a fight with Tupac Shakur when he came to the defense of Kadita Jones, daughter of recently deceased music icon Quincy Jones. Sources say Jackson was present when Tupac, who was dating Kadita, called her the B-word. Jackson, who was like an uncle to Kadita, had words with Tupac. Then the two squared off and supposedly Jackson got the better of him. It's unclear whether or not it was a dance off. During an interview on Conan O'Brien's podcast, beloved actor Tom Hanks dropped one of George Carlin's seven words you can't say on TV. Hanks used the fifth word in the seven word sequence, well worth a Google, when referring to a critic who panned his new film here. Hanks added that the same critic panned his directorial debut years ago, That Thing You Do, and just a few months ago called it a cult classic. Hanks did have a lighthearted tone when he dropped the CS bomb to Conan and said, that's what we signed up for. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. A little patchy fog or some low clouds this morning, but we will clear out. It'll be mostly sunny later this morning into this afternoon with a high in the low 50s today. Tonight, clear with a low in the mid-30s. Tomorrow, lots of sunshine with a high in the mid to upper 50s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 41. That's your WMDX Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at mad.radio. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 